Theobald, you mentioned in just previously uh, how hotels wanted to move forward with certain decisions but didn't have the resources around the tech. Uh, when you say resources, clarify that for me. Do you mean financial resources or human body resources? Yeah, I think it's both. There's, there's the money-wise and what's my ADR and how many rooms do I have. I was talking to a hotel uh, just yesterday that has five rooms in, in Aix-en-Provence in France. And, and he, he's just using at the moment an all-in-one solution for PMS distribution uh, and now he wants stuff for you know uh, in-house experiences, how can he upsell them, uh, he wants a revenue management system, he wants a omni-channel communication. So there's one part about like the financial resources in, in the sense that he has five rooms, his ADR is let's say 300 euros. How much can you actually get out of it about, by implementing a revenue management system, mm -hmm. for example? So that kind of hinders him to, to actually implement that solution. And then the, um, the human resources, I think, you know, if you think about a hotel with five rooms yeah. and you have more systems than employees, yeah. it gets complicated. Of course. So. But arguably, Airbnb yeah. um, automates pretty much everything that they would need for five rooms yeah. as a central platform. Yeah. Um, all those things you just talked about, yeah. uh, either directly or uh, through that kind of uh, API, um, a host can get access to yeah. that. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually crazy how, how Airbnb, and I've, I was renting my apartment, let's say, six years ago on Airbnb, and like you said, today it's become, let's say, an all in one PMS, almost in the sense that you have all the tools in there. Yeah. Um, and it's that argument, one of the issues is, especially with the, let's call it operating system, not PMS, and yeah. you're like, I want to be after enterprise. I want us to be mid segment. I want to be after budget segment. I just don't see that being uh, feasible. Yeah. If you know, as in Airbnb's uh, central platform services, hosts, be they independent or um, managed, but ultimately it's, it's one unit mm. that's yeah. being, uh, being exactly. managed. One observation I make is that um, with now a lot of, let's say, operating systems, let's call that a new word for a property management system, but they still ultimately behave a lot like the legacy guys, try to please everyone. We want to be enterprise, we want to be mid-size, we want to be the budget end of the segment. And to name one company in particular, uh, CloudNet, that seems to be very focused on long tail, we do everything that supports the hotelier uh, under 50 rooms. There seems to be quite a logical argument in there to say, I can't please everyone, is it? Like the Airbnb point that we just made, that I need to focus on a particular segment. Um, is that the opportunity challenge that, uh, that we face, or, or do you see it being more complex? I mean, I think a lot of, I, I definitely think segmentation is important and knowing your customer and like everything in life, it's, you know, it's, it's focus is key. Um, a lot of, of course, newer if operating uh, systems um, will start off with the smaller hotels with limited service because it just needs limited functionality. And that's why they, they kind of evolve, uh, uh, they test the product with them and then step by step they can go and then everybody wants to sell enterprise. Uh, or at least a lot of them, you know, because that's where the big bucks are. Um, but I think, I think <laughs> arguably, of course, but you know, you can see that the trend looking at, at, at the, let's, for example, Muse, who started also really small and, you know, more, and I think they really want to become the global players. That's Apaleo, just mentioning a few of the other ones. They are also, I think they are also really good in that, you know, limited service, at least these are the, where today they have their USP. Um, and I think that is that should be important that they can differentiate themselves, and because through this they will be much stronger and they will be able to uh, all of all of the providers who differentiate themselves and that they can focus on their their markets and um, be strong and and, and and maybe also develop functionalities which really satisfy their uh, core functionalities if it's long to stay or if it's uh, you know a bit more. Yeah, I Sorry, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think also you know you, you mentioned the, the big box or in, in the big hotels that call it like that, but with the yeah the vacation rental market and, and the long yeah the long stay, uh, I think these and co living and co living and all that. I think the different uh, companies you know rising up that are like um, Rentals United, Clubbeds, the, all these different actors. There's suddenly a huge market that's opening, uh, and that's why also I think we're seeing more actors. 
in these operating systems for, for small to medium accommodation yeah. providers. Um, so it's like closed yeah. ecosystems yeah. on one side, which really serve as a single segment, and that means that you have the confidence, as you said about your client before, that these are the, the, the must-have things that I have, I have to have, and I'm pretty much got all of that served. The alternative, and I kind of put like sort of plays a little bit like Apple Leo now into that, that's more kind of a generic modular platform that sits kind of independently. Yeah. It will not do everything that you need. You'll need to plug in another third party or, in my, in my opinion, or you're going to build the yeah. rest yourself, if you know what I mean. And, and that's possibly where the mid and the enterprise segment is sort of going to as well. If you look at platforms like Amadeus and, yeah. uh, and Saber and what have you, what's being developed there. Um, so that means that now we don't have PMS, we have operating systems closed versus, yeah. uh, versus open. Yeah. Which I think is quite exciting, mm. uh, if you know. Mm. Yeah, I think, uh, I think like you said, you can build sometimes, uh, there's always this kind of buy versus build, uh, you know, enigma or, or debate. And, and as the generation evolves, I think we'll see more and more uh, companies, maybe not, let's not call them hotels, but companies that will be building their, their guest app, for example, uh, because the technology is way more accessible. Uh, oh, yeah, possibly a good example. A good example, but already a big, big company. I, yeah. I, I, mean, I think there's a couple new concepts around Berlin and Munich uh, that are, I think, stereo or different ones like that. Who are, who are building their apps themselves uh, yeah. just because they don't need to pay for it or they think they're going to develop it and then uh, the cost, they can find it again uh, instead of paying it you know, until... Mm -hmm. It's definitely an option that yeah. people can take. Or they tell their investors they're a tech company. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the future. Uh, I'd like, given that you are... Uh, let's say the next generation coming through, um, dare I say it, David and I are getting a little bit long in the tooth. Speak for yourself. Um, <laughs> um, AI and robotics is, is always a, a hot topic in all industries across all verticals, but I'm, I'm especially curious to see how the hospitality industry is going to embrace it. I see tremendous value that it can offer, but of course there's also that debate argument, well, we're gonna lose jobs, people are gonna suffer because of it. I think if we take that component out of the equation, let's come back to your example of a five-room hotel. Um, that, where I, I personally believe, believe AI could, and even robotics could potentially add huge value to the operator if it's cost-effective. Obviously, it needs to be cost-effective. What's your opinion? How do you feel generally based on the people that you talk to? How do you feel that the next generation of hoteliers will embrace? AI and robotics, and do you think that it's something that will be really picked up on? I mean, we have little robots going around the rooms now, bringing towels and amenities when requested, but I don't know that they've really been embraced, uh, possibly because of cost, I don't know. So, what's your opinion? Um, for me, I think definitely AI will have, a, in all parts of our life, it's one point or another, it, it's going to be there, robotics is also going to have an a big impact. Today, robotics technology is not there yet to really be able to serve on a high level. Um, it's more, you know, marketing gimmicks. Um, but doesn't, but it's, you know, part of the, the evolution. And the costs also. It's, it's just for smaller hotels where you say, okay, five rooms, maybe they could benefit from it, but they don't have that money to invest into, into such a technology. And when it's still in, in, in testing phase and then at the end actually somebody needs to be there just to make sure that it works. But in the hospitality sector you also always have that aspect, you know, losing personal little touch and AI and, and, and robotics is gonna change the industry to the negative. And I was at actually not a, a hotel conference this weekend, but bits and pretzels in, in, in Munich. And there was Reid Hoffman Hoffman, uh, founder and CEO of LinkedIn and he was saying we need to have more movies about uh, the future and which are not kind of uh, you know, painting the negative light of technology but more showing what are the potentials of it. And I think this is also important that we have the same in the hospitality industry and hotels showing that they work with new technology and they are embracing it in a way that it supports their business and that it actually um, saves them time, that they, you know, we have less and less resources, we have Fachkräftemangel in Germany, it's, you know, it's a huge discussion with new technology, you can save them to actually do the repetitive tasks 
and more you know evaluate and, and take time with the guests so I think technology needs to be and AI robotics needs to be portrayed in a much more you know what are the potentials of it and then we talk about it more and, and we present these cases to the hoteliers so that you know they don't feel scared about it and we need innovators who will you know be the first ones to do it and to do it well because I don't see the robotic uh, the hotels with robots in Japan or um, you know some I don't know I forgot the name of, of this one Henry or one of the robots which just drives around or yeah for me these are just you know it's okay. showing that yeah. that doesn't add value no, but I no. think where, where the opportunity is on, on short term medium term let's say five years what we see is that guests today and what we're doing in general with our phones were more and more self-service. We don't, yeah. it's not that, you know, people are offering us the opportunity to do self-service so we're doing it. It's just that's the way we want to do it and we sometimes don't want to talk to someone to get a sandwich. And I think there's just, a, when I was at Citizen M one year back, it's not even robotics, but what I mean is they're driving traffic to the bar where, you know, they're actually having a human interaction, but when it comes to consuming food and getting a sandwich, they just get it through a machine. Mm. Um, yeah, mm. I think it's just an example that I think the self-service part should, that's where like the robotic part should be. Uh, on the AI part, I think we're still far away for, for the robotics. It's more in, in terms of software and yeah. revenue management and, yeah. and chatbots, but I think we should leverage robotics more on the self-service part and, and making sure that, you know, a guest can do everything himself if she wants to do it. Yeah. I think that's, and we use very big labels uh, that often overcomplicate all the very simple tasks. You know, you could call it a bot, or you can just say, this is a piece of software that replaces the reservationist. Yep. Oh, you're going to save some labor cost because of that. Isn't that cool? And possibly improve your service quality in response time, etc., etc. Um, and perhaps the way that we're currently obsessed with everything that's shiny and new must be good, uh, but it also sounds like it's untested, maybe uh, not practical for my small business, um, and should be kind of uh, boiled down. Mm. But I'm a firm believer though that this technology, especially around AI and bots, for example, saving a reservationist job, I don't necessarily think a hotel, hotel could or really should save the labour on that. I think they should reposition that tar or that person or that position into another role. And the hotel that gives then more of that engagement in terms of guest experience and personalization and, for the And that's good because that person today spends eight of percent of their time doing uh, exactly that kind of work plus data entry. Right. Right. And Probably. they could be spending all of their time eight exactly. percent on strategy, yep. uh, demand generation, yep. and, and the human aspect of demand yep. optimization. And, and a big impact is also is actually um, you know noticing the trends. Because if you have every reservation um, person just answering the emails and you know they don't talk with, another, with one another about all the little impacts or what you know, if you connect that with uh, all that data, with having you know analyzing all of it and then being able to give recommendations to the management, you know these are the highlights which are positive, negatives. For example, reviews and then directly telling the hotel manager. Out of your, uh, out of uh, our analysis, we would rec recommend that you make sure that you, you know, watch out here or you do something, you change something there. Mm -hmm. There's already providers um, doing that, and this is help, which actually helps the independent hotel who has no time exactly. to take care of technology because they don't receive a dashboard or just data lists where they need to kind of figure the trends out, but they have, you know, the AI told them exactly what does this mean and what do you need to do. Yeah. So they just see, okay, these are my three priorities and they can and they can learn about it, but... Um, and, and taking Reed Hoffman's, uh, I, I like that idea because if you go back to Star Trek, and then exactly. 50, 40 years later we get Alexa. Yeah. Uh, right. That was exactly uh, his, his, his... Uh, oh, was that his example? <laughs> was saying that the you know, 40s, yeah, was, <laughs> no, but it was back in the time, technology was that writing uh, and, and, and all the stories yeah. was showing how great it is and everybody, we started then to develop things and these became reality. Sure. And now we only portray the future of technology. And that's like golden 60s era where exactly. everybody was right. all about that. But if you think about, and now to reduce that a little bit, storytelling to a hotel about, okay, this guy stayed with you before. 
We know he's going to be arriving at 6 o'clock and leaving at 8 a.m. So think about an opportunity where as soon as within a half kilometer radius of the hotel, based on his mobile phone, we've identified him and say, hey, can't wait to see you soon. Um, he's got that keyless access uh, to the room. There's a bot behind the scenes talking to him the minute he's in the room saying, hi, I'm your digital concierge, how can I help you today? Um, he doesn't have any native app to download. He can just, using Wi-Fi, start talking to the network about everything that he needs, etc., etc. Um, and when he leaves the next day, he doesn't even check out because we've got his credit card details, we scanned his passport three days before, and for him, he has the perfect experience. And this and how do you now educate those sort of stories to hoteliers and get them to kind of plan those journeys? Uh, and but I'd also add one level to that that um, I think is important because there are some people, believe it or not, that would find what you've just described as too invasive. The worst thing ever. Right. right. And I think it's yeah. important that you, have, you give choice. Exactly. And, and, and that it's able to be clearly yeah. identified. Definitely. And, and it goes also back to the topic which where we said technology providers need a focus. And I think, or, or, or don't, but hotels need a focus. They need to know who is my target market. Yeah, yeah. Right. What does my target market want? Right. What do my customers want? And based on that, you as a hotel, you need to take the decision. You know, if I'm an alpine resort, maybe I don't want to do all of that. And I like it that they, you know, the guests, the whole family comes to the reception and says hello, and you know, the owner comes down. But there, you could bring in seamless technology and, and you know, just say, okay, this family is, 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 you know, you have a picture in your PMS with, a, with a, just a complete profile of, so that the receptionist can directly see, okay, this person comes for 15 years to the same hotel, even though it's a seasonal worker who's been there for the first time. And so we are connecting artificial intelligence, robotics with technology also of today. And I think there's a lot of different facets to it. But hotels, you know, they, there are so much advantages of already having a connected tech stack and being customer centric. And that they should first look at their customer and see how can we serve them the best way and then go out and, and, and find how, what solutions are there to fit exactly yeah. the goal of the customer journey or, and, and, and achieve this goal and not go to a certain software vendor who tells them, we're the best and this is the best you can do mm -hmm. and then they you know just kind of think of, of it that way have a strategy yourself first look at your customers and take your team into it your team trip advisor all of these are the best data resources yeah. to give the management the, the right uh, ideas to know yeah. okay what should i do next in terms of technology because it needs to be aligned to your business strategy mm -hmm. it strat it strategy and business strategies they go hand in hand right. nowadays yeah. if, I can, if you did a straw poll of what content has been published uh, this week in, in hotel tech we do talk a lot about this guest experience fact but the reality is that hotels are drowned in uh, distribution and transactional content um, it, it's mainly about the booking the transaction the price this is all very relevant uh, but actually guest experience typically always wins right because no. at the end of the day we want to attract and yeah. keep loyal regular guests and even if they don't come back again they talk about the great experience that they have inspired other travelers to come and stay. Yeah, but I, I think the reason why that content is here is because at least from what we see in, from hotels is that the KPIs that matter to them in terms of ROI are always almost always monetary you know and the guest experience that the benefits you could get out of them are you know indirectly have an impact on your revenue because you'll, you'll get more occupancy and you'll get more and more people to your hotel because the experience is better. But the reason why all the content today is about transactional distribution is because these technologies have a direct impact on, on, on revenue. Top line, yeah. On top line, I think that's one of the reasons. Yeah. Uh, but you know, as, as storytelling and all the, the new important marketing things come, you know, uh, it's going to make a difference, but today I think that's one of the main reasons why all the companies are focusing their content and strategy on. That's a very fair point, but I think it, coming back to your point, David, as well, I think it's also very important that that storytelling, that guest journey, customer journey, is also focused on because if that's done poorly, then the hotel's not going to receive those guests again. They're not yeah, going to come. I, I think there's also a whole shift in the, in the classification of hotels that's going to change as well. Mm -hmm. the, the one, two stars are 
unfortunately uh, going to disappear to vacation rentals and and you know long long stay apartments yeah. uh, and storytelling will become a must uh, yeah. and kind of become the new marketing I think. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, Very good. Yeah. I guess before we finish up, one last question. We do need to wrap it up. One last question. Um, <laughs> You could be here all day. I know, <laughs> but I'd like to. Have we started? <laughs> yes, we have. I'd like to put this one to you because it's, um, I think, very relevant given where you've come from, straight out of hotel, hotel school, starting your own business. I'm sure that there was many um, challenges that you faced with that, and you probably thought to yourselves, "What have we done? Why have we done this?" Still now. So I think <laughs> I think credit to you for, for what you've achieved. It's, it's fantastic. Um, but if there are hotel students today watching this, what would be your advice to them if they were wanting to start their own startup or their own business that's focusing on the hotel industry? What would be some of the things that you would um, say? This is really where you should be focusing on. For me, it's definitely assume that you know nothing. Uh, don't come out of hotel school and think that you know it better than the general manager who's been there for 30 years doing their job, or you know the person working in the restaurant for for so much time. Because at the end of the day, you need to understand it's it's, it's your customers. You need to they're number one for for every decision you take, and learn from them. Be open for mentorship. Be open to to learn from people with experience because the best thing for innovation is the combination of not and something which is also important is learn from them but don't take a no for a no have your own idea be ruthless be you know be an innovator but don't neglect the experience because combining both together is really really powerful because that's how you can build something which fits to the market but at the same time can disrupt everything. Yeah. That is, for me, um, key. And just yeah. persevere, you know. Yeah. You, you need to, to, to stand back up when it yeah, doesn't when work out. Because well, that's not. a story of life. I think, <laughs> yeah, I, think I also think there's, there's one thing that maybe in the beginning we, we kind of didn't focus on is, is break things, like build quickly. Maybe a bit, you know, uh, unstable, but build quickly, test it, and break it, and build it again better. You know, uh, we kind of had always this thing of waiting until it was perfect to actually uh, put it out on the market, and that's uh, and it was not tested, so it was not perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think also depending on your, your target market, we're aiming uh, uh, at a, a target market that's a big industry. If you think about the the, the, the number, like the the money itself, but the number of users. Uh, it's not so huge compared to like B2C right. uh, technologies uh, and depending on, on these two things uh, if you go to B2C you can quickly kind of test your idea you know out of a, a, a hundred people sample uh, that's also something to take into account. Good, excellent. Well gentlemen thank you very much. It's been thank great you. having you on the show. Yeah. It's good to have thank you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks, and uh, David thank you for joining us. <laughs> 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 um, okay, folks, that's all for this show. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed that, make sure you go to our website, sign up, subscribe, download your apps, get all of this content on your phone, put us in your pocket, you know the story. Thanks for watching. Until next time, it's bye-bye from Berlin. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys.